Okay, good day. Uh, welcome to everybody here. Uh, it is a first for me on FX Street, and I want to thank uh, Maud and the others for the invitation. And you can see my desktop. Is that is that correct? Um, you currently see a slide saying why your money management sucks and what to do about it. All right, great. Um, I think we have about 45 minutes, and uh, in, on my slides, there's about 28 uh, topics or things that I can talk about, and I'm going to try not to waste your time, and hopefully um, at the end of this, you will have a better idea about um, my approach to money management and um, it will improve your, your your trading. Okay, the first part that we are going to discuss is just a few very basics about risk or money management. And let me say right from the beginning, I do not uh, prefer the term money management. I prefer to refer to the concept of risk management. And there are reasons that will become clear as we continue. But let me basically um, give you the primary reason why I say that. There seems to be an approach towards trading that the analysis or the um, the finding of trades, the way that you identify trades and that you do trades, that's basically what trading is. And then on top of that, as a sort of a separate module, you can add this magic concept of money management and that will fix all deficiencies that you have in terms of your trading system or it will fix the deficiencies. So money management as like a separate module added onto the trading system part of your trading is a bit of a problem. I therefore say the whole approach to trading um, should be based on the basics and the concepts um, regarding risk management. The trading is about taking risk. You want to make money. And in order to make money, and uh, you have to take certain risks. And if you take specific risks, there may be... Um, specific rewards going with that. So risk management cannot be uh, separated from the trading and your whole approach towards trading. Now, if we consider risk management, then let's begin at the beginning. What is the most basic rule of managing your risk? It was your grandma and grandpa's rule of risk management and their grandparents. Uh, it's coming back many, many, many years ago. And that is the simple rule. Do not put all your eggs in the same basket. If you put all your eggs in the same basket and you take that basket and you run to the market or to the kitchen or, or whatever and you slip and you fall, all the eggs are broken. So do not put all your eggs in the same basket. That is the key risk management rule. And I find it absolutely amazing that in a lot of what you find in the private 
forex trading space. People do exactly the opposite. And I'm going to explain to you that they do that and, and how they do it. But instead of don't put all your eggs in one basket risk management, they exactly do that. They put all their eggs in one basket. Or rather, they put their one big egg in the basket. And there they go. So when we get a little bit closer from the general approach to risk management, we and we look at the the most important risk management principle in the investment and in the trading environment. That principle is the principle of diversification. It says the same as the grandma and grandpa's rule, but that's the technical approach. You have to diversify your risk. And diversification most of these uh, uh, principles about risk management come from the investment industry and uh, the, the portfolio trading, and therefore uh, and diversification has to do with uh, put your money in different markets, put your money if you, for instance, only trade stocks, then trade different stocks in different sectors of the of the market market or different types of stocks at least, maybe some blue chips, maybe some um, penny stocks or whatever. Diversification is the primary risk management um, principle available to people in the investment and trading industry. So we're going to look at how diversification is used in risk management and in money management. And let me also here, right at the beginning, say, um, I actually wanted to say this a bit earlier, but for those people that do not know me um, well um, and do not have a background of, that you have either, either read uh, something that I have written or been on a course that I've offered or done my mentoring, my whole approach to trading differs in one critical aspect from the more general approaches to trading that there are. But this one critical aspect that it differs from is so fundamental that every aspect of the trading is different and has to be approached in a different manner. And that is why in this um, webinar about money or risk management, um, I'm not going to cover the basic stuff. I'm going to try to explain to you that difference, and I'm speaking on the fundamentals of that difference. I will, towards the end, give some practical aspects also, but then if you are completely new to my approach, the practical aspects will probably not make all that sense to you, all that much sense to you today. So, diversification is what it's all about. But now, if you find the problem that in a lot of trading, in the private trading and private forex trading environment, um, the diversification is never used. People talk about risk management and money management, but the one thing that they must do, they don't do. They do the exact opposite. Another aspect that we unfortunately um, for a lot of people have to cover is the aspect or the concepts of luck and skill. You see, with risk management, if you consider risk management, it makes a huge difference if what you are busy with implies a lot of skill 
and a little bit of luck or a lot of luck and a little bit of skill. Now, if you make a mistake in terms of what the amount of luck and skill is in any of the endeavors that you are busy with, well, you're going to have problems to, to manage your risk. I'm just having a look here at some of the, of the notes in the chat. Ornithologist. <laughs> okay. There's a very important concept that you can, any endeavor can be, uh, the, the, um, the combination of luck and skill can be uh, read in terms of what's called the luck skill continuum. So, what is the uh, amount of luck involved and what is the amount of skill involved? Now, it's very important for trading that we understand that um, there's more luck and quite a lot more luck, and this can be good luck or bad luck. It is luck as a concept. There's much more luck involved in trading than skill. I want to give you an example. In the, um, if you think uh, about chess, for instance, somebody who can play, um, uh, you know, chess quite well on a, on a high level, there the luck involved is very, um, is very small. It's and the skill, a lot of a lot of what that almost everything that happens in the chess environment is skill. But then it's also important that you understand that the chess environment is very stable. There are rules, you know, the board always looks the same, and the um, the chess pieces are the same, and you are only allowed to move a specific piece in a uh, in a specific way. And in other words, the whole environment is very stable and therefore the skill sets can be developed and you can apply, you can, you can apply um, your skill and you can, you know, win, win tournaments and so on. There's a little bit of luck. Um, you might find that, that your very skilled opponent, um, on so, um, you know, the opening that you choose maybe isn't the best one or maybe he just missed an important move that he should have made to cover some aspect of your attack or whatever. So, yes, there's a little bit of luck, but the skill is dominant. If you now look at trading, just from the point of view of how stable is the environment, you can, com you can see that it is completely different. There is no stability in the trading environment. And we're talking here short-term forex trading, currencies, and intraday price action. And, you know, uh, some people uh, trade on 5- and 15-minute charts, and they believe a trend is something that started in the morning. And, you know, by the afternoon, it was a big trend. And it is completely unstable. And there are external influences. The, the, there are no rules. Then somebody uh, writes some article in on some of the uh, websites traders look at, or somewhere a um, central banker says something that's interpreted by journalists, and this impacts on now persons uh, trade in immediate reaction to what they hear. So, in the trading environment, you must make no mistake that luck play a much bigger role. Than skill, and although um, there is a necessary skill set, your risk management must include um, your risk management must include the fact that you have to account for the impact or, or the fact that there's a lot of luck involved in what you do. The time doesn't permit me to give you some examples, but um, so let's just remain with that and move on to the next point about the basics that we have to consider. If you trade Forex, you probably do margin trading um, 
because you want to make returns that um, would make a typical investment manager drew. You you want to um, make 100% and more a year. You are not really interested in making 6 or 7% a year um, and therefore you use margin trade. And that means you trade with more money than what you really have. Now this um, inf- uh, impacts dramatically on risk management. The fact that you use margin trading. And um, I want to explain that to you, how it impacts and how um, people make a critical mistake when they use concepts like only risk 2% of my account on any one trade. And this is one of the most important things why people's money management or private traders' money money management actually um, sucks. So let me – I now have to um, get out of the um, slideshow here and share something else. So I hope this works without too much of a um, – of a glitch. Um, okay, I'm struggling to get the um, the PDF open, so I'm just going to leave it, and I'm going to explain to you the issue that margin trading causes with risk management. If you're a stock trader and you have a hundred thousand dollars and you believe in diversification, um, the the margin trader or, or that stock trader will buy, say, 10 different stocks to the value of $10,000 each. And so one stock, the, the um, say the price of the stock is $10, so he will buy 1,000 um, units of that stock. And then he will, as a stop-loss principle, put a 2% stop-loss on that stock. 2% of his portfolio will be the stop-loss on that stock. And he will apply that to all of the stocks that he buy. He buy 10 different stocks, and he will apply his 2% of portfolio value loss on each and every stock. So, what happens now if you look at the individual stocks? Let's say he bought um, Apple. He, 10% of his portfolio is a 20% potential loss on his Apple stock. So he bought at $10 and his stop loss will be at $8. That is at 20%. So the Apple stock in itself has an opportunity to, um, you know, to move 20% before his stop loss will be hit. Now, that is the issue with margin trading. And forex trading and where people have small accounts and then they use leverage to trade larger amounts of money. So where we've just looked at what a stock trader with a portfolio of stock, stocks in a $100,000 account um, does. Now, if you now take that principle, 2% of account value, then the um, the margin trader he might have a $10,000 account, but if he now trades a $100,000 position, leverage of 10 to 1, if he now puts a 2% of account stop loss, that's only $200. 
in other words, the the position that he has, the say euro dollar position, can actually only change 0.2 percent in value, and then the stop loss is in. So the problem with modern trading, and specifically. So the problem of margin trading, and specifically, um, if you use high leverage, is that your stop loss causes you to actually take no risk. You get back to the stock trader. He takes 2% of portfolio and the individual stock can actually lose 20%. But the leveraged margin trader that apply that kind of principle, 2%, 1%, 3%, 4%, 5%, the higher you make the leverage, the less risk you actually take before your stop loss is hit. And you're not going to make money if you do not take proper risks. So consider that when you when you um, when you do margin trading, aspects of risk management change completely. Okay, we're going to look at stop losses. I think the first thing about stop losses is that they are completely overrated in terms of risk management. It is as if if you just add stop losses to what you do, all your problems, all your potential uh, risks evaporate. There are much more to risk management than how to address stop losses. One of the most important aspects in stop losses is the missing link, and that is that when you apply a stop loss, you should actually apply it to stop further losses. And it is very difficult in the very short-term trading environment to determine if what you're going to have next is actually further and real losses because in a very short term um, trading environment price prices move basically up and down quite randomly and completely unpredictably another issue with stop losses that which everybody um, you know experience or a lot of people experience and that's the big com complaint the stop losses get hit too often because the stop losses are placed too close to the entry. And as a, as a result, um, people complain the whole time that they have bad luck because just after their stop was taken out, the market went into their direction. Stop losses usually make um, or is discussed in terms of um, risk reward ratios. Now, unfortunately, we're going to run out of time, and I cannot spend a lot of time on um, the issues about what I call unscientific risk reward ratios. But it is basically is basically about the following. If you want to determine a risk reward ratio that actually works on a specific trading strategy, you, you, you need to have a huge amount of data that proves that a risk reward ratio of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 or whatever this risk reward ratio um, is, 
that that is actually a scientific risk reward ratio and that if you apply um, that specific strategy, you are in the long run going to benefit from the fact that you have more losses than wins. I think one of the problems why um, most beginners and, and, and not successful traders in the long run, um, one of the problems they have is that they just never get to a real scientific risk reward ratio and they go to something new. They go to a next, um, next system that they try and then this and then that. And uh, in many cases, they do not take all the trades that the system offer, and uh, that affects the risk reward in any case. So unscientific risk reward um, uh, approaches is one of the reasons why stop losses simply cause more losses than stop losses. Unscientific percentage of risk. We've we've touched on that. The most people just it's just a thumb suck number. No, they read somewhere something about the two percent or three percent don't risk more than two percent of your account. Combined with the um, unscientific risk reward ratio, most people never really test these things, and they just believe it and they try something and hopefully it will work. Well, unfortunately. It doesn't work for many for many traders. An uh, aspect of stop losses that is problematic and where people apply the concept of market risk, things immediately go better. And in very practical sense, um, if you only look at, oh, this is my account and this is my leverage and um, I use 2% stop loss on a any trade and I trade on 5 minute or 15 minute um, charts and you ignore the fact that, well, there's basically only one market and, and you look at that one market either through a, a 5 minute or a 15 minute or a 1 hour or a daily scale. The fact that you use a specific chart interval does not change the market. The market and the risk in the market is something that you cannot just ignore. You cannot make as if the market is something that exists in a five-minute time interval and not on a much longer scale. There are many other market participants that move the market probably in much bigger ranges than a private trader with a small leverage account can contemplate. So you cannot ignore market risk. And that is what why stop losses go wrong. Because people believe that there's a trend on a five-minute chart on an intraday level, and they put some stop loss there, but they ignore the market risk that that five-minute chart does not represent the market. The market is what happens if you stand way back and look at everything and what everybody does. So do not ignore market risk. But if you then, for instance, um, apply this and think what other people do and put stop losses where the market would have um, exhausted itself in a certain run, either intraday or intraweek or in what, um, uh, in what time frame you you are comfortable with your trading. If the market has exhausted itself, then there a stop loss might um, be much more profitable. Okay, the next concept about stop losses that um, that you have to understand: increase stop losses increase uncertainty. Now, everything people say about trading psychology, I believe, uh, miss the point. It's not about fear and greed. It's about uncertainty. And um, if you doubt this, well, there are some interesting um, stuff that you can read about the impact and uh, the role of uncertainty in our lives and how our, our brains struggle to handle the concept of uncertainty. 
And um, the problem with stop losses is that they increase um, uncertainty. So I'm going to try again and see if I can um, share with you a, a, a different file. Um, Right. I believe you will be able to um, to read this. Um, I've highlighted the, the most important um, part here. If you operate in a highly uncertain environment in terms of timing the entry price of a trade, and you then add as risk and psychological or fear management stop loss at a price that will objectively seem to be hit before your target price, because it is usually a factor of two, two or three closer than the target price. You increase the uncertainty. You can take this further. If in your own experience or your perception of the marketplace has experienced the great concern with placing stop loss orders is that they are hit too often and robs you of profits, you would have had because the market just took out my stops and reversed. The concept of stop losses in itself do exactly the opposite of what it is supposed to do. It is supposed to reduce uncertainty, but instead it increases uncertainty because you are uncertain about your entry, but you, in addition to that, now you are uncertain, will my stop be hit or will my stop not be hit? This is the biggest psychological issue with trading, uncertainty. Let me see, let me just go back to the, um, to this. Okay, um, I hope you could, um, could read, read that with me. Um, and, um, or back to the slide. So are the slides on for you? Just confirm. All right. Uncertainty and money management. The concept of uncertainty is extremely important in trade. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what uncertainty? I'm not uncertain about anything. I use technical analysis, and I only trade on high probability trade setups. That's when I trade. And there is, in other words, what are you talking about uncertainty there? Well, our time is running out, and I have to move quickly on this. In the very short-term time space that most private traders trade, timing the trade is what they try to do. You don't enter unless you can time the trade. So you find the trend and you use smaller time scales to exactly find the correct time to, entry, to enter the trade at a specific price. And the problem with that is if you objectively look at how price action operates intraday. It is highly unpredictable and it is actually not incorrect to say that price action is basically random. And for that matter, for that reason, you have to reconsider the importance of timing your trade. Uncertainty of is this the correct entry? Uh, should I place a stop here? Should I place a stop there? It all increases the uncertainty. And the way to address uncertainty is to reduce reliance on timing. And this is where the big difference between different approaches to trading come in. You either believe you can time the market and you have the proof that you can do it and all the money that the timing of the market provides you. Or you believe you cannot time the market. I believe that it is virtually impossible to time the market in the intraday time scale 
And it's also unnecessary. You can actually use risk management strategies to just spend more time with your positions in the market. And that changes then everything. If you can um, address the issues about timing the market, then you can at, look at in a different way at the risk management and how you approach risk management. Because if you approach your trading in a way that you, your trades can actually spend time in the market, that you do not have to place a stop 20 pips or 30 pips or 50 pips away, but you can actually allow your positions to move with the market, then you are in a completely different trading space. And this is all about addressing the issues with uncertainty. You don't want to feel uncertain. That's where, why you want to time the trade. Why do you want to time the trade so perfectly? Well, because you want to put on a big trade because you want to make a lot of money with that one trade. Why can you do that? Because you believe your analysis and that specific uh, strategy that you use to time the trades, well, it's strategies that provide perfect timing. There is an issue with that. Um, you know that it doesn't prov provide that perfect timing, and a lot of people realize after a long time and a lot of losses or not making the money that they wish they could have made, that timing trades in this intraday um, timing sphere is not so easy. When, if you believe that spending time in the market is a better approach than timing the market, it changes a lot of things in terms of your approach to uncertainty. First of all, you have to be very flexible in your response. Your trading system should allow room for error. If it's not important if you enter the euro dollar at 134.80 or at 134.20, that is flexibility. It leaves room for error. That is one of the things that you can do to manage your risk. Uncertainty demands a sustainable approach. Again, if your view is that um, I have to live with the uncertainty, I cannot change the uncertainty by trying to tie my trades, then your approach must be sustainable. You must be able to, through all sorts of market conditions, apply your trading system and your process of trading. Uncertainty demands an emotional response. This is one of the issues with the typical I can time the market perfectly money management strategies. People believe that they can actually just switch off their emotions, trade unemotionally, use stop losses and be happy with the fact that you have even more uncertainty doesn't work like that. What I mean with you, Bank, is you must look at the at your own emotions as if you have an emotional bank. And there, in terms of um, behavioral science, there is a very simple formula that goes against the idea that you can make three losses for every win. And that is in your mind, you lose 2.4 points in your bank or 2.4 of your personal emotional wealth for every mistake, for every error, for everything that goes wrong. But you only get one of those units for everything that goes right. Therefore, for every stop loss that's hit, it's a negative on you. 2.4 times more than the positive of the target, profit target that might have been bigger than you have, what you have hit. And uh, most traders find that they are emotionally bankrupt long before their trading account has been wiped out. Long before that, people lose interest in trading long before they lose all their money. 
And that has to do with this issue of how you use the or, or relate with the uncertainty that you have to live the whole time with. The solution is to look at your whole trading as risk management. Uh, we said that in the beginning. Uh, you cannot add money management just onto your analysis and your strategy and think money management, 2% stop loss or whatever is now going to fix the problems. If you look at the market in terms of um, the uncertainty dominate, it's difficult to time. It's not necessarily necessary to perfectly time the market. Then you can look at trading as trading in itself as risk management. It starts with low leverage or small position sizes. You must use small position sizes. That's not new for people who um, attended webinars today. Uh, some of the topics covered it. How low leverage? That is, I say, very low because you know the smaller your position sizes, the less you have to worry about stop losses especially in the short-term space. The second thing in terms of diversification, how do you diversify? The most important thing to diversify in short-term trading is you must diversify your timing risk. You must not be dependent on that I must um, time this trade perfectly. Diversify your timing risk. How do you do that? Well, First of all, you must identify a trading area or a trading price range in which you can trade. That's your sort of field of play. Just like a golf course, that's where you're going to play golf. Or a baseball um, field, that's where you're going to play. If you can identify your field of play where you can diversify your timing risk, that you are not dependent on exact timing of trades, then you are moving towards trading in itself as risk management. How do, I, how do you diversify your timing risk? Well, you use multiple entries per trade. Some people simply refer that to that as scaling into positions. or scaling out of position. But yes, if you do not believe in timing the market at exact um, and entry points with close stops, then your trade consists of multiple positions on your field of play. How do you get multiple positions into a specific trade? You use the well-known concept of cost averaging. Um, unfortunately, the time is running out on us, so you cannot. Uh, I cannot go into the detail of uh, cost averaging. I just want to warn that cost averaging and the bad principle of averaging are two completely different things. And the most important thing is in cost averaging is that you must know what your maximum trade is before you begin to enter multiple positions into this trade. Another aspect of diversification that's important in trading as risk management is that you must diversify your profit target. The way the market moves makes it simple. Pro um, the market is going to hit smaller profit targets more often than bigger ones. But you need bigger profit targets also. You need big trades because you are also going to have big losses. Therefore, diversify your profit targets. It's great to have many small targets, 30, 40, 50 pips, but it is even better to add to that the 300 and 400 pip um, positions that you can have. Even with no leverage, a 400 pip move is 4% on your account. Keep that in mind. A 300 pip move, 3% return. Finally, when you look at trading as risk management, stop losses play a role in terms of your per trade level. You've identified a field of play where you're going to use multiple entries and you're going to enter them with uh, with the concept of cost averaging potentially. You're going to have different profit targets 
everything add together to a trade. But if that trade goes wrong, then you have to stop your losses. Now you have, because you have multiple entries, your leverage is not one on one or two on one anymore. It might be five to one or eight to one. And you cannot have that type of leverage and not have to stop real potential losses. If the market moves out of your field of play, then you have to adapt to that. Take your uh, medicine, see where the market um, moved to, and start over. And that is the, the last point. That's a practical aspect of trading as risk management. I hope you have um, 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 in, enjoyed what I've tried to convey to you. Uh, time seemed to be a little bit of an of issue, and uh, hopefully there's a chance for a, uh, for a follow-up. Um, if you want to uh, get in contact with me, there are the websites, www.dirkutwe.com, www.dirkutwe.com, forex at gmail.com. Thank you very much. And um, let me see if I if I haven't answered your um, questions in the in the message box here, then uh, pop me an email and I'll try my best to um, to respond to them in that way. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.